Welcome to video 5 in a multi-part series on the basic concepts of programming. Now that you have some programming experience under your belt, we can start trying to tidy up our code by getting a computer to repeat lines of code for us. In this video we will be looking at what's known as the for loop, although there are other looping techniques I will cover in later videos. In programmer speak, the act of looping is known as iteration, which means repeating steps or instructions over and over again. Why is this a useful technique, I hear you ask? I've seen many amateur coders use the same line of code 50 to 100 times, where they could do the same thing in one line of code using a loop. Stop it. Get some help. So let's see how we can do this in C Sharp. Starting with a simple console.write line, let's tell the console to print this out 10 times along with the number that is being printed out. So let's break down what is happening here. First we begin by writing 4 followed by 2 brackets, and then 2 curly brackets. The two standard brackets contain the amount of times we wish to loop, and any code inside the curly brackets will be repeated as many times as the condition demands. In this example we declare an integer that starts at 1. After the semicolon we declare that this loop will keep repeating while the value of i is less than or equal to 10. So in other words, once the value of i reaches 11, then this code will stop looping. After the second semicolon, we tell the value of i to increase by 1 every time the code loops. This can be set to different values, which I will show you later in the video. One final thing before we move on is this declaration of i is a variable declaration. That means that you can use i as a regular variable. In this example, we printed out the value of i in every loop, and because it increased by 1 every time it looped, we counted from 1 to 10. You can even do maths with the variable, such as this example, where we print out the 2 times table. Let's look at some other examples now. This code has been altered slightly so that the value of the for loop starts at 5 and ends at 10. Also important to note is we don't have to use the variable identifier i in the for loop. In this example, we have used the identifier num instead. This example looks very similar to the first example, However, it instead stops at 9 and not 10. Can you pause the video and spot why? If you spotted that the condition states loop while i is less than 10 and not less than or equal to 10, then you are correct. That means this condition will stop at 9 and not 10. In the example above, we have changed the iteration value to be plus 2 instead of plus 1, meaning that the value of i will increase by 2 every time we loop continuing while the value of i is less than or equal to 10. This code will do the same as the one before, but because we started the i variable at 2, it prints out all the even numbers as opposed to the odd numbers like before. Finally, we can also use variables instead of constants to choose our start and end values. Extremely useful if you want to loop a line of code, but that line needs to loop a different amount of times depending on the values in the program. While the practical uses of this coding technique might not seem quite so clear at the moment, once we get to more advanced techniques such as arrays, we will be using for loops quite a lot to make sure our code is written in an efficient way. Remember, if you are writing 50 lines of the same code over and over, you can probably do it in a loop. Now try some of the on-screen challenges. If you can do all five of them without help, then let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, also let me know in the comments. If you would like to see step-by-step -step answers to these challenges, there will be a follow-on video which I will pin in the comments. If you learned something new from this video, or enjoyed it otherwise, please give this video a like and tap that subscribe button for more coding videos.